Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi, thanks for joining us again on Celebrating Act Two. Obviously, my partner Art Kirsch is with us, and the gentleman in the middle is our good friend and major contributor, Manny Pacheco, the man who invented Forgotten Hollywood. Manny, how are you? Well, I'm not an inventor, but I did create it, yes. <laughs> good morning, Manny. Good. This is Art. How are you doing? Hi, Art. Hey, good to see you, buddy. I like the surf uh, motif in the background there. That looks great. Yeah, I, I, I went out on my veranda. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Manny, um, you remember, of course, that the... Uh, uh, Academy Awards were not that long ago, right. and I wanted to ask you about the uh, the winner. I was surprised that um, uh, uh, what's it called, Parasite, won Best Picture. Now it also won uh, Best Foreign Picture, and I didn't think that foreign pictures were allowed to win to be eligible for the Best Picture award. Wow! Well, so I was I was very shocked at that. Actually, foreign films have been nominated for 30, 40 years off and on. Uh, and, really? and, and, and technically, if you go back seven or eight years, the movie The Artist, which was a silent movie essentially, but it was made by a French company. So technically, oh. that was the first foreign film to ever win the Best Picture Oscar. You're right. <laughs> You're right. It, it had no dialogue, so I didn't know it was a foreign film. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, you know, it... it I don't think it matters. I think that if it could be eligible for two, it's the same concept that if it's eligible for best picture or best cinematographer, best director, it really doesn't matter. It can be a foreign film that happens to be the best picture of the year as well. I think that that's fine. However, now, do you think, I was going to say, do you think that politics, Hollywood has a lot of politics involved and they vote for this guy and not that guy for weird reasons. So, you know, as a viewer watching and checking off my boxes, who, who I thought should win the Oscar doesn't always match with who wins the Oscar. No, but you know, I, Hollywood has a tradition of, of, of forgiveness. For example, uh, last year, I believe that Roma had a really solid chance of becoming the best picture of the year, a foreign film. And because of the Netflix conflict that people just don't want to vote for a Netflix picture for any reason, um, I think that the uh, Academy felt bad enough, the faithful, that they decided that this year they were going to make up for last year's error, and, and they voted for Parasite. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And, and then, of course, it became really political when the president uh, decided that uh, he didn't think that it was a good idea if a film from South Korea should, should become the best picture. But truth be told, politics and uh, the filmmaking industry and Oscars in general – uh, in particular, actually, uh, have a long, long history. They go back many, many years. So, uh, po of politics affecting uh, filmmaking. Yeah, but also, right. uh, like uh, for instance, um, uh, years ago when the, there was a writer black list, uh, weren't there right. films that were were uh, either panned or uh, they weren't ineligible, even though they may have been the actually best picture because and of 19... uh, it's, it's all politics isn't it or a lot of right. it is yeah 1952 is the year where you can say politics and uh hollywood intersected 1952 was a great year of films by the way just a tremendous amount of films but one of them um well, probably not the best picture of the year uh, the greatest right. show on earth yet it won over such luminaries as the High Noon and the Bad and the Beautiful. And oh, truth be told, my. I know, yeah, High Noon was actually, I, it, it, there was a big campaign for High Noon to, to, to win the best picture. But but uh, the, the, the powers that be headed by Joseph McCarthy, the senator from Wisconsin, didn't like the subject matter of, of uh, an individual who wanted to walk away from naming names and and, 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 and and needed the help of others and refused to get it because uh, he was left alone uh, to, to fight the bad guys, just proved to be too much and too close to the situation that was going on with the House on american Activities Committee. So uh, a, a group of people led by John Wayne and Walt Disney and Cecil B. DeMille actively campaigned so that High Noon would not become the best picture of the year. Really? As, 
Yeah, so they all turned to Cecil B. DeMille's uh, The Greatest Show on Earth, and that was chosen and deemed the best picture of the year. And any anybody who sees the two back-to-back would, would, would say that, that was a, a travesty. Yeah, but oh, yeah. There was a middle ground in all of this. They could have selected The Bad and the Beautiful. It won more Oscars than any other film that year. Um, it, it won the Best Supporting Actress Award, Gloria Graham, who also appeared in The Greatest Show on Earth, and yet she won it for The Bad and the Beautiful. It would have been easy to pick an MGM lush film with Kirk Douglas and Lana sure. Turner and Dick Powell and, yeah. and the like. So they could have gone that route. They didn't. High Noon loses. Uh, Bad and the Beautiful loses. And we're left with the greatest show on earth. And uh, as P.T. Barnum says, there's a sucker born every <laughs> you, you know, Manny, it's interesting because I remember uh, 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 High Noon and a wonderful film, but I never, I never in my wildest imagination interpreted it in a political manner as you described that the folks in Hollywood did. Well, it was such a political uh, controversy that seven years later, John Wayne decided to uh, create a movie that was exactly opposite of High Noon, and that movie was Rio Bravo, and in the, in that picture, mm. uh, unlike Gary Cooper, who can't get anybody to help them because it's written that way, John Wayne has the help of Walter Brennan, uh, Dean Martin, Ward Bond, Rick Nelson, and it's the same premise, you're going to fight the bad guys, but this time now you have a team, a team that can name names in, in a, uh, you know, a hypothetical kind of situation, although it's set in the Wild West. So sure. that was that was the allegory that was set opposite of High Noon, and John Wayne made it very clear that Rio Bravo was no High Noon. Now, granted, Rio Bravo is a great picture. I, I'm not going to take anything away from that film. It is, yeah, and, it is, and it's it's just about as good as High Noon. It's just the the, the fact that politics entered, and that's that's a shame because both films uh, are on its merits uh, are very very fine pieces of cinema. Well, it's interesting because it's uh, uh you, you know there's this um, kind of what goes around comes around. Um, here we're talking about Hollywood being affected by politics. But Hollywood also chooses, as you say, when John Wayne chose to make a, a film that's the opposite of High Noon, po Hollywood also has a great influence on the, on the culture. It is a, yes. a an originator of a lot of pop culture for for us. You, so it's a yeah, yeah. But you'll find that in the most mostly Hollywood will address very important social issues. But it usually waits until it becomes popular. They're, they're not the uh, pioneers of, of, of social change. They do jump on the bandwagon when it becomes very popular or becomes very evident that change is, is happening. That's great. That's great. Manny, thank you so much. I love talking to you. Well, thank you. Uh, and your little insights into Hollywood history. It's terrific. We, we'll be doing this again soon, I'm sure. Oh, Always a pleasure, um, Manny. Tell us Always a pleasure. Well, thank you, Art. Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Wait, tell us, uh, tell everybody where you, we can get your book. Well, you can find it on Amazon, obviously. Uh, it's a, actually three book series, Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, and of course, Son of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, and my latest book, Road to Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. You're, you're not going to run out of material, that's for sure. Also, just well, because... Yeah. You have a fascinating blog, which we actually uh, link to on our website. But why don't you give everybody the name of uh, your website that has this great blog on it? Well, for the, you know, because it's the brand, ForgottenHollywood.com. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. Okay, John. That's nice and easy. Yeah, great. Well, listen, uh, now it's time, Art, for you to plug our website. Uh, yes, CelebratingAct2.com. But more important, YouTube. Dot com. We are now known as Celebrating Act Two. We, uh, where our subscribers are growing, and they let us have our own name. So please go visit Celebrating <laughs> Act Two. You'll see lots of videos by Manny and by dozens of other interesting people. And please uh, send either Art or, or John or, or Info, any one of the three of us, uh, any yeah. requests you have for future uh, videos. Uh, that's it, John. 
take Good. it away. And, and Manny, Manny, thank you again. And everybody who's watching, thank you for watching. Tell your friends. And thank you for helping us celebrating your Act 2. For more on Celebrating Act 2, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.